Why do you do it? Why do I do it? Because uh, it's a free world and probably what I like to see. But why do you like to see your skin mm. lighter? Because the argument of Matthew Knowles and also many other people is that we want whiter skin or uh, people want their skin to look paler mm. um, because there is something appealing about being white, that it's almost racist to want to be white, whiter, and that it's a political thing to sort of, to, you know, to, to make your skin whiter. Why not embrace the beauty of your darker blackness? Well, we all embracing our beauty. I'm a proud, you know, African lady. I mean, whatever I do, I will never change my complexion but completely. We're, we're doing this feature about colorism, and yet, a lot of women, I'm going to be, would Me. tan, fake tan. Fake tan, yeah. maybe. People go on holidays and get yeah. a tan, and that's the other it's, side of the argument. It's a personal choice. Okay. I mean, it's what you want to see. You don't, well, do, it for Kelly. You don't do it for pressure. You no, do it because, because I had success in both shades. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I was modelling, I was darker, which is good. But I think colorism is not even, it shouldn't be an issue. We shouldn't be talking about it in the 21st century. But it does exist. Matthew Noel, you know, he mentioned it, but that's black American history which mm. is kind of through the media, is mm. travelling and coming in the UK. Kelly Goff, good to speak to you this morning if you're there, there listening to this. Um, white women like myself, loving making their skin looking darker. Irene is a darker-skinned woman. She wants to make her skin looking lighter. What's wrong but with that? But there's a bit of, of, of a different history here that we got to talk about. First of all, when I see Irene, I see a beautiful woman who I want to give a hug to because I don't think the issue is her choice to lighten her skin so much is why she felt the need to do so. And study after study after study has confirmed that white Americans, even those who, who don't believe they hold any blatant bias when it comes to race, do hold bias when it comes to skin color. There was a 2006 University of Georgia study that found that employers across the board preferred lighter skinned black employees to darker skinned one. There are studies that have found that lighter skinned women get shorter prison sentences in America. Just think about that for a second. Lighter skinned black women get shorter prison sentences. I can count dozens of studies like it. And if you look, particularly in American culture, most of the barrier breakers in almost any major field are either light skinned black people or biracial black people. Our first black president, uh, President Obama, who right. is biracial. Uh, our oh. first elected U.S. senator who looked white, mm -hmm. Edward Brooke, our first uh, elected uh, black congressman post-Reconstruction, Adam Clayton Powell, who also looked white. So the point I'm trying to get at is I don't think that anyone's sitting at home and saying, uh, you know, I hate darker skinned black people. It's something that's subconscious, mm -hmm. and that is why it ends up affecting people like Irene, because society then begins to impress what? upon the what? message that if you were lighter skinned, you were more attractive, you were less dangerous, you were more comfortable to be around. Um, you know, even in your own country, right, the first uh, person of color in the royal family is going to be a, a part black woman who does not outwardly appear black to all people. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that everyone okay. would have a problem if you look darker, but there's plenty of data to okay. indicate that people are comfortable because Meghan Markle does not appear to be outwardly as dark as some African Americans. Kelly, there's a lot in what you say. There's a lot in there to, to, to talk about. So I mean, a lot in what you say. Um, but, but where does the impulse to look whiter come from? All of those facts there that you put down, I, I take to be true. It, because in Africa, it, in Africa, and in fact, Matthew Knowles himself said that he had black parents, but in fact, he found himself looking for a whiter skinned woman when he wanted to marry her. And he didn't right. feel it was a response to white people's attitudes, it was a response to black people's attitudes. And within that's Africa, that's Africa that's we know that. Within the community. That's not within the community. And so no, where does that pressure accurate. come from? Is it a, a racist white that's, black that's pressure? Why, that's why, that's black why I want pressure. to get some context. That's not entirely accurate because what I'm saying to you is the pressure from the black within the black community mm. has still come from historical racism. I'll give you an example. For instance, I like a lot of black people in America. My ancestors were slaves. Mm. But my great-great-grandfather was the white man who owned my family. In instances like that, it was very common in America. I know that in your country as well, there was the, the movie Belle that was based upon a true story of a woman who there was slavery in her family, but her father was white. So what ended up happening historically in America is many of the children of those slave owners who looked fairer-skinned were treated better during slavery than the darker-skinned Ke Kelly, can I, can I jump in a sec?
uh, you've been shaking your head, Irene, for the last yeah. three minutes. Your response? I don't speak slavery. You know, when I, I live my life, slavery is, yes, it's hard to accept, but for me, it's in a person. I, live, I have six children, they're mixed race. My husband is, you know, white and everything. When uh, I hear a story like this, it's mostly in American, black American history, do you know? Kelly's saying that it's unconscious, though. I you know. might not consciously think you'd be doing, but from his story, from history, yeah. it's an unconscious thing. Do well, you fear that you might have that? Not at all, because if you think about slavery, I mean, they take it to colonialism, colonialism, whatever, colonialization, whatever they call it. But to me, I take it to, uh, you know, if you look at slavery, for example, the darker, you're more, like, likely to be uh, under the sun and the light and maybe indoors. But it has nothing to do with slavery. You know, I've, be, I've been taken back there just by lightening, you know, a dark spot and everything. It's a choice, you know. Uh, sh she might have an opinion, fine. Mm. But I move forward. I'm for moving forward. It's moving a new world. Forward. It's a new world. Fascinating.